first off, let's make a distinction between session state data and application or user data. Application or user data is, is the data that we interact with uh, when we are using an application. This is what we're most familiar with. It's, it's our user data uh, for the particular app. And this is sort of the, the application populates a database with all the user data and its own application-specific data and user preferences. Uh, that type of user data is also application data. So usually a schema that's been constructed specifically for the application, a database that's being used for the application, and all of the application's data is, is uh, uh, kept in, in that database. Session state data, on the other hand, is data about the state of the session. So it's really metadata about the session. And this is useful for business continuity if session state data is kept separately from, from the application, then there's some recoverability. If the application goes down, another instance of the application comes back up and picks up the session state data and continues processing. So there's a very immediate user benefit in terms of uh, not seeing any disruption in your, in your interaction with the, with the software from session state data. Uh, in, and putting session state data in a cache makes sense because uh, it gives you very fast access to this, to this information. If there is a need to access this, uh, you want to make sure that it occurs fast and is not disruptive to end users. Right? Session state data exists within the scope of a session. So when a session is over, the data is gone. It only, it's only needed within the scope of a session. Application or user data, on the other hand, transcends sessions. It even transcends application instances. Uh, it'll go across instances and even uh, applications. You can have session data that's, that's shared across applications. So if I have state information saved in a highly available cache and it's not part of the application, it's externalized, uh, then the microservice that I'm interacting with, uh, if it does come down for whatever reason, then another instance of the same microservice can retrieve the session information and continue processing. Right? The benefit to the infrastructure is that in microservices applications, application instances uh, can share the same session context. And instances come and go. Instances uh, are brought down for adjusting capacity. Additional instances are started. In this environment of instances being started and destroyed, how do you maintain continuity? Well, you maintain it by keeping session data external to the, uh, to the microservice instance. And uh, uh, this also improves infrastructure's availability. So if an goes, instance goes down, the platform can bring up an, a new instance, a completely new instance, pick up session state information, and continue processing. Right? So this notion of externalizing state is very central to cloud-native architectures, so much so that it's, it's part of what's known as the 12-factor principles for building cloud-native applications. And a key tenet in, in, the, in that set of principles is that session state should be externalized, should never be embedded in the application or microservice code because you never know that instance is considered to be ephemeral. It can come and go. Right? The nice thing about microservices is that you add instances on a granular basis. Some monoliths have to be scaled in, in their entirety. Now, the whole monolith has to be scaled. So you see application instances being added uh, in this animation, uh, and, and instances get taken away just as frequently uh, for various reasons. So if I now start sending state information to a shared cache that you see in the middle of this animation, then what happens when a new microservice instance has to be added? You see that box appearing on the top right. A new instance has appeared. Now that instance can read state information from the cache. You see that blue triangle. And after it has done so, it can basically continue processing on that specific session that it just picked up from the, from the cache. Okay, so the end user then shouldn't see too much impact from uh, having this, this occur in the background. Uh, and this is done by the platform. The platform will start mic microservice instances as needed. And so when they do come on board, they can, they can pick up state information and continue processing. Okay. Cornelia is going to show us how it works. Excellent. Well, thank you, Jag, and that was a really great introduction to session state caching, very, very well articulated. Um, and so what we're going to do is show this running in, in Pivotal Cloud Foundry together with Pivotal Cloud Cache. Um, and so I'm not going to go over the basics of Pivotal Cloud Foundry. I'll assume that you know that, although I'll try to at least fill in enough about the caching if you're not intimately familiar with, with PCF. But what I've got here is I've already logged into my PCF environment. 
And I'm going to push a new application. So I'm going to push one of those microservice applications and show you how those things that you just saw in the animation work. And um, before I even uh, uh, push that application, I want to show you first and foremost how easy it is with Pivotal Cloud Foundry and with Pivotal Cloud Cache to create an instance of one of those external caches. So in that last animation that you saw from JAG, when he showed the Pivotal Cloud Cache bubble that was front and center, right down below the microservices, how easy it is for you as an application team, whether you're the developer or you're the application operator, to generate one of those external caches. So in order to do that, we have, I have a Pivotal Cloud Cache installed in my PCF environment. And so I'm going to show you the set of services that are available. Apparently I can't talk and, and type at the same time. So uh, there you go. So you can see the different services that are available in my PCF environment. Right there you see P Cloud Cache. So that's Pivotal Cloud Cache that's already been installed. That's not a service instance yet. That's a service instance, that's a service offering. Now to create one of those, I'm simply going to type CF create service, the name of the service, the basic plan. There could be multiple plans. I only have a single plan available. So I'm going to select the plan that I have available, which is the base cash plan. Then I'm going to name my service and the important thing here is if you're going to use this cache for session state, then you're going to add a tag with this string. You're going to add a tag that says session replication. There's another alternative in that you could put session replication at the end of the name of your service. That is very important because that's what's going to create some of the automatic um, features that we're going to see in the demo in just a moment. So I can go ahead and hit enter on that and you'll see that it says, all right, great, I'm going to start, I'm going to create that cluster for you. It's actually going to create a cache cluster. And if I do a CF services, you can now see that that cluster, the create is in progress. So I've asked for it to create that cluster, but because it's actually creating a cluster of virtual machines, it's not instantaneous. So in Julia Child model, you can see here that I've already created another one, and that's the one that I'm going to use for the rest of the demo. So I'm going to use this one, which I've previously created. So while that create is happening, and by the end of the demo, we'll see that the, we should see that the create has completed, I'm going to go ahead and deploy my application. Now the application that I have here is a very, very simple Hello World application. It's just going to do some greeting. It's going to ask me to identify myself, and then it's going to say hello to me. And that identification of myself is part of the session um, state that we're going to talk about. So I'll show you the code in just a moment, but the first thing that I want to do is I want to just simply push this application. So I'm going to do a CF push. You'll notice here that I'm pointing to a specific build pack. So this capability, as Jag said, we're announcing the availability of the session state caching plan in our Pivotal Cloud Cache does require the use, if you want some of the automatic behavior we're going to see here, it does require the use of a new Java build pack. That new Java build pack is not yet in Pivotal uh, Cloud Foundry, and we're expecting it to be there in the next release, um, and it will also be available in the open source much sooner than that. So it should be available in the open source within a couple of weeks. Then you can see here that I'm pointing to the WAR file and naming my app Hello World. So if I go ahead and hit Enter on that, you'll see all of the familiar stuff from deploying applications to Cloud Foundry. I've gone ahead and I've gotten a URL, Hello World.cfapps, and so on. I've uploaded the WAR file, and now it's going through the staging. And you can see here that it recognized, of course, that it was a Java app. It also recognized, because it was a WAR file, that it's going to need Tomcat. So you can see here that it's downloading and expanding and using all of the Tomcat um, dependencies. In a moment, we'll see that this is going to start up, and then I'll show you how the application actually looks and is working. So there we go. We're just about started. And I'll grab the URL. There we go. 
and we'll see the application running. So let me go over to my browser. Let me get to the right browser tab. And here you are. So there we are. Super simple application. Hey, I want it to greet me, so I click on Get Your Greeting here. It doesn't know who I am yet, so I'm going to go ahead and put in my name and click Submit. And now, when I rotate back and forth between these different pages in the app, you can see that it's not specific to a single page on the app. It's actually maintaining that state. So there, there you go with all of that. Now, I can, of course, close the browser and reopen the browser. So if I close the browser and I create a new tab, through browser magic, it has maintained that session. So it'll maintain those sessions from the client side for a little while. So here you, you can see that it still knows who I am. But there's an application, of course, that's powering this behind the scenes. That application is running on Cloud Foundry itself. It's the application that I've deployed. Now that application, of course, is running inside of a container, and that container could be getting cycled at any time. That's one of the characteristics that's really inherent to cloud software and cloud native software is that you can't depend on the container that your application is running in to stick around for a long time. I've been in this industry for a while, and it used to be that 10 years ago, we would measure uptime on servers, sometimes in, the, in, in months. We would expect servers and we would expect application containers to be around for months. Now, they've done some studies and found that in certain cloud native environments, that application containers stick around for an average of about four minutes. So they're constantly getting cycled. They're getting cycled for a number of different reasons. It might be that something's happened to a server, the server's crashed. It might be that the application itself has crashed and we're, we're creating a new container to stand it back up. Or it could be something as simple as, hey, we've had an operating system vulnerability, something like Heartbleed, and our IT, our infrastructure folks, our platform folks, are going to make sure that we patch that vulnerability across all the machines. And in the process of doing that, it's going to cycle a container. So the way that we're going to simulate that here in, in the demo is I'm just going to access an endpoint that's going to simulate the cycling of that container. So I click on that, and you'll see an error message in a moment. What's happened here is that I've, in fact, killed the instance of that application. So if we come back here and I do a CF apps, you'll see, however, I just claimed that that application container was crashed. Well, of course, that's part of the magic of Pivotal Cloud Foundry, is that it recognized immediately that the application container, that the application had crashed, generated a new container, and restarted that. Now, of course, the effect of that in this particular case is if I come back here to my application and I come back and I ask to be greeted again, uh-oh, it doesn't know who I am. And that's because I have not yet externalized my session state. So let's take a look at what we need to do that. If you remember, we did, we have the, C, the services, so if I do CF services, you can see that, of course, the one that I created for you here live, the create is still in progress, but as I said, I'm going to use my previously cooked version. And in order to do that, I simply need to do a CF bind service. And I'm binding my application, my Hello World application, to that session service that I had previously created. I do that bind, and as soon as I change any bindings in the application, of course, I'm going to need to restage that. So I'm going to do a CF restage the application. And you'll see that it's going to go through that same staging process as before. Now while it's doing that, let me jump over and show you some of the code. Because this is where it's really interesting. If we start here with this, it's a simple Spring Boot application that extends the Spring Boot servlet initializer. And you can see it's a really basic configuration. Notice that there's nothing in here about Pivotal Cloud Cache. It's just an application. And if I come over here into my Spring application, you can see that I've got a couple of endpoints, one which is servicing the GET request and one which is servicing the POST request. 
So the get request, which is where I'm getting greeted here, so you can see here the slash greeting, what it simply does is says, hey, let me see if I know who you are. And if not, I'm going to send you over to the login page. But if you do, if I do know who you are, then I'll go ahead and just greet you and say, hello, Cornelia. Now notice that the code for looking up who I am is very simple. It is just simply using HTTP session. So it's pulling from the HTTP servlet request, pulling the HTTP session, and grabbing the attribute name. So notice here that there's no code that's specific to Pivotal Cloud Cache. It is just your standard code that your developers are probably using today and when they're using HTTP sessions. Similarly, if we go down here and we're actually writing those values, you can see the same thing. When they've done the logging in, um, this is where I've done a post. So you can see here that this is when I've done a post to the service. It simply says, ah, okay, you want me to remember that name? I'm going to remember it in my HTTP session object. So again, the code is really basic. Now if we come back over here and we take a look at what happened during this staging attempt, you can see here that it did all of the same stuff it was doing before. It recognized that it was Java, it recognized that it was Tomcat, but there's something new here. And you can see here that because I was bound to an instance of Pivotal Cloud Cache, it recognized that binding and it said, ah, I will auto-magically take everything that you put in the HTTP session and that you're drawing out of HTTP session and I'm going to cache that in an instance of Pivotal Cloud Cache. So here it's added geode-based session replication. So that's the magic that we want to see that's going to show us that this is working correctly. So now if I go back to my application and I'm going to go back to the beginning Ah, and let me show you something here before I invoke this. I want to come over here. I have logged into GFish. GFish is the command line that we can use to access that external cache. You can see there that I've connected into um, that, and I'm now going to issue a query against a region that was automatically created for you. So when, we, when I ask for that Pivotal Cloud Cache to get created with that special tag of session replication, it created in a particular format so that it knows that it's going to cache session data. So there's already an area, a database, we call it a region, called Gemfire Modules Sessions. And that's where I'm going to store my session information. And you can see that right now it's empty. There's nothing in there. Now when I come back over here now and access my application, I'm going to ask it to greet me. And of course, it's a new instance. I haven't typed in anything new. So this time I'll type in my son's name and click Submit. And now you can notice that I can go back and forth. And sure enough, everything's cool. Now coming back over into GFish, let me issue that query again. Check that out. We now have information that we're storing in that external cache, externalizing session state. So that's just the name of, that's just the, the ID, and there's data that's sitting behind this ID. Where this gets really brilliant now is that now, if for whatever reason I need to cycle my container, my container gets cycled, and it crashes, and then it's restarting, when I come back to the beginning, uh, I did that too quickly. The route wasn't there. It was still recreating the container for me. Let's come back over here and see that the application has restarted. CF apps. It has restarted, so I should be good now. There we go. The application was brought back up by PCF. When I ask to be greeted, there you go. It still knows who I am because the session state, everything that was in those HTTP session objects was externalized into the instance of Pivotal Cloud Cache.